annotations are all about the base, no treble the effort by Fabio Pagotti. Fabio is a UI5 developer since the very beginning who spent a lot of time playing with annotations, which is as well the topic of his session. Um, besides that, Fabio, um, Fabio is also a very active in the SAP community. All about that bass probably makes you think of a song, at least I did. Um, I hope Fabio is not going to sing us a song, at least I hope, but he will, on the other hand, help us to better understand annotations and make it easier for us to use annotations. Please, Fabio, the floor is yours. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you, um, all the organization of the event. Thank you for having me here. Uh, thanks as well, you who stopped doing whatever you were doing to, to listen to me uh, for these next 20 minutes, where I want to talk a little bit about um, OData annotations. Uh, it's not a new uh, concept, but I know that most of you maybe have already used these before when doing uh, Fury Elements apps uh, mainly. But here the idea is to give some some. Uh, background, some foundation of on the very basic concepts when it comes to that. Okay, so for those who don't know me, uh, my name is Fabio Pagotti. I run a company, a training company in Brazil called Ovli. So I'm basically I'm a UI5 instructor here as well. And I've been, uh, like mentioned, doing uh, UI5 development for, for quite some time now. Okay. Uh, I also am um, a developer, apart from, from teaching UI5, Fury, and other stuff, I'm, I'm also a developer, uh, currently working for Festo uh, in Brazil, but it's a German company. And yeah, so you might have read the session information before. And even though the session name, the, the uh, mentioning the Biz Application Studio, uh, this talk, I will not cover uh, the, the tooling itself, okay? Because uh, it's it's understandable right now. Uh, everyone is probably aware that the right tools for creating Fury Elements apps or uh, using smart controls would be uh, using the Biz Application Studio or uh, VS Code with the right plugins inside it. But the, the thing is that uh, even using the right tools you might have issues if you don't understand the concepts behind uh, the, the Fury elements and, and all that stuff. So imagine that you you might need to do some, some maintenance, so some troubleshooting in an app, and maybe you're not using the right tools or maybe uh, the right tools are not uh, perfect, like they will never be perfect. They might have some lim limitations and then you have to do some stuff without that much help. Okay, so uh, that's the idea. And for those who never worked with this kind of development yet, uh, for those who are basically doing uh, freestyle apps, okay, I have a very smart uh, introduction before deeping dive uh, in the annotations part. Okay, so uh, not in scope of this uh, talk is the backend implementation, how you implement annotations in CDS or in a BAP code or anything like that. And nor is the scope of this presentation teaching how to use the plugins. Okay, basically there are many good uh, source of information right there. That's not uh, my main idea here. Well, so just to put everyone on the same page, uh, first, for those who have never uh, created Fury Elements applications, I recommend you to uh, first understand what smart controls are and how they work. Okay, so the this small snippet of code we have in the slide uh, with a smart table might be a good starting point. Okay, of course that the UI5 documentation has many more stuff for you as well. But the idea behind the smart controls is that you, with just a little bit of code, you uh, use, uh, create fancy controls in your app. So for example, the smart table, using just this uh, uh, snippet of code, my trait for you, a really uh, fancy table with sorting, filtering, uh, capabilities and variant management and, and so on. Okay, so the first thing would be to 
to double check, this is a very important concept. Uh, they are also known as metadata-driven meta controls because you must have uh, a no data service in order to use such kind of controls. Okay, so that's mandatory. After understanding how uh, smart controls work, then you start creating Fury Elements applications. Basically, instead of having a freestyle app with uh, one specific smart control, the whole app is created by uh, using annotations, by using the old data structure, the, the metadata of a service in order to do everything in the app. So if you keep using the standard functionality provided by SAP in this kind of app, you almost have no JavaScript code. You don't need to write your own views, your own controllers. Okay, currently it's possible to do some, some adaptations, some changes in there, but if you just use the standard, there, there won't be uh, needed for you. And then uh, using those two concepts, you start uh, searching for annotations. Uh, having some some issues, for example, checking the documentation, uh, trying to implement those in the front end, in the back end. So uh, then it comes to the tooling. Okay, just very fast here. Uh, in the web ID, we had the annotation modeler. That was the first step to help the developer to, to create annotations, especially on the front end side. And also in the Biz Application Studio and VS Code, we have the Fury tools. I know there will be other sessions uh, tomorrow, mainly talking about that. Uh, and all those small extensions you find inside it that help you to, to do some uh, kind of activities in an uh, overview page, for example, or help you uh, coding using some code completion and so on. Okay, so those tools are getting better. Uh, every day, for sure, uh, no question about it. The documentation is getting better as well, but like I mentioned, even with a good documentation, even with the right tooling, you might have issues. So uh, I separated here a few questions that I believe are relevant for this talk, and I hope to, to help you uh, answering those questions if you have them on a daily basis. So the questions are, where are annotations found? How they are organized? How to use an annotation? What are the ones available for you? And a bonus topic here, I will mention at the end of the call, uh, what are the most used annotations, okay, in SAP standard apps? Okay, so where are annotations found? Basically, uh, you might want to switch to the full screen mode uh, right now. If you're watching not live on YouTube later on, maybe you're gonna pause this part of the video, okay? But uh, if you take a UI5 app created for you, uh, created by you or by SAP, you might find uh, annotations, for example, in the metadata of your service. Here, those are highlighted in yellow. Uh, so there are a few that starts with SAP, column, something like label, value list, and so on. But there are also some annotations which uh, contain uh, a very specific XML tag called annotations. Okay, uh, you might find those inside the same metadata service. There's also a, a third possibility here, which is not in this slide where you have a separate link, a separate service just for the annotations. Okay, this is also feasible, but it's not the focus there. So if you see a no data service with those kind of XML tags, the annotations, most likely you're handling with this kind of app, a, a freestyle app using some kind of smart control or maybe a Fury element application, which internally also uses uh, smart controls. You might also find annotations locally in your front-end development. Usually there's a special folder called annotations with a special file called annotations as well. Uh, and they basically you have uh, those tags inside your project. You, you might have even both of them, some annotations coming from the backend, some, some annotations coming from the front-end as well. That's very uh, common actually in uh, apps provided by SAP. And the tooling that we currently have helps you quite a lot uh, creating these kind of annotations on the front-end side. 
And then to understand how annotations are organized, you must understand what uh, vocabularies and terms are. Okay, so after having, having that uh, foundation of uh, old data, if you know uh, basic stuff like what is an entity type, an entity set, properties, and so on, that's good. If you go to the official odata.org website, you have a special section there talking about vocabularies. It's a very small section. Uh, it's easy to find on Google. And basically what you have there is the information that a vocabulary is a collection of terms. And those two concepts are crucial to understand how things work uh, internally. Okay, so basically uh, vocabulary is a collection of terms. I will describe each of them, uh, not each term, but the structure of the terms uh, in the next slides here. Those uh, in the end are just XML files. Those XML files are not located inside your app, but the UI5 library knows them. Uh, many backend frameworks uh, know how to handle uh, vocabularies as well, but in the end they are just XML files. Okay, and if you go to GitHub, doesn't need to be right now, but if you go to GitHub, you 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 find the most used vocabularies by, by UA5 in basically two repositories. Okay, the Oasis um, technical committee repository on the left with some generic uh, vocabularies and the one in the right provided by SAP. Okay, just a few of them. We have even more vocabularies than, than those. Okay, so I really recommend you checking out those files inside those GitHub uh, repositories because it will help you understand uh, how things really work. Okay, just to give an overview how a, a term look like inside the vocabulary, here's a real world example, even though I just removed some uh, parts of the XML file. Every term will have a name in the example, the placeholder term, a type, which might be a, a primitive type, a structure, a collection of primitive or structures as well. And fundamental, uh, the, the thing that this term can be applied to. Okay, so very uh, specifically of this example, the placeholder term can be only applied to all data properties. Okay, you might, you might find other terms which are applicable to entity sets or to navigation properties or to associations, anything like that. Basically, the, the basic concepts of uh, all data. Here's a different example. Okay, the ge geolocation term using a geolocation type, uh, type, a complex type containing latitude, longitude, and, and location. And this term in yellow can be applied to an entity type. And here, my focus is not on uh, really explaining where you use that specific term. This might be useful in an overview page or in a list report. It, I, I don't mind that, but understanding how things are organized and inside the vocabularies. Also, something that is tricky when you, you're getting started is to understand that types might inherit other types. So if you take the UI vocabulary provided by SAP, there is a very uh, important term there, which is the line item. Okay, and it has its own type using the data field abstract type. But inside the same vocabulary, you can see that there are some other types uh, inheriting the, the first one. So in the end, if you take a look uh, on the latest complex type you have in that slide, the data field with URL, at the first, uh, uh, the first side, you might think that, okay, there are two properties inside it, but in the end, no, because of the inheritance, you have two properties directly um, defined it in the complex type. You have a different one coming from the data field and you have the four properties inside the data field abstract. So like in uh, playing object orientation, you have the inheritance. You also have that inheritance here, which is very important. How to use annotation? Okay. 
So inside the a service, you will see some references for vocabularies at the very beginning of the service. And then you have your own metadata with entity sets and, and so on and so forth. And the annotation. So keep in mind that frameworks, uh, they will add the references for the vocabularies for you. It's something that you will not do uh, manually, but it's important to, to understand they are there. And to give some uh, examples of real world uh, apps using that concepts, we have that purchase requisition app with the settings buttons that allows you to do some sorting, filtering, and, and so on. And in order to accomplish that, you see on the left, the vocabulary information, the vocabulary term, and inside the real uh, word app or data service, you have annotations linking uh, information, linking some, some information we have on the vocabulary. So you can see the vocabulary on uh, the, the term on the left, uh, call it apply supported being used in the data service. You can see here in pink uh, where this term can be applied. And in the real service, you have that specific term being applied to an entity container, for example and the values inside the annotation coming from the type you have in the vocabulary again. So this structure is very important. The tools will help you to write stuff on the right side, but it's very important to understand where this comes from. Just to give some other examples, because of course you might pause the video once you have that video available for you. Uh, in the same app, we have another term called filter restrictions. Okay, uh, this one is a little bit more complex. It can be applied to an entity set. It contains its own structure, some, some, some fields for you. And on the right side, inside the metadata of that same app, how the, the term is used. So an annotation basically is the use of a term inside the vocabulary. Another example, uh, inside uh, the My Sales Overview, app is an overview page app. You have a card there, which basically uh, gets information from a CDS view, a CDS containing some parameters. And here's is something that you will definitely find uh, eventually. Okay, uh, the same term being used on the same piece of your service. Okay, so when you have that need of using the same term over and over again, to the same part of your service, you will need a qualifier. And just to give you the sample snippet with this uh, scenario, on the left, you, we have that vocabularies uh, provided by SAP, the UI vocabulary, with a very well-known uh, term, the selection variant, that can be applied to an entity set or to an entity type. And on the right side, highlighted in yellow here, we have the same term, the selection variant uh, being used three times for the same entity set. Okay, so in the end, each qualifier will uh, fill uh, a parameter in a CDS in, in this example, but the important part is knowing what a qualifier is. A qualifier will help you uh, distinguish between the same term when used on the same place, okay? Uh, finally, what annotations are available for you? Uh, I, can, I could talk a, a lot about it. I will just give you a very small hint. If you take the UI5 documentation and if you open a smart control in the API reference tab, you have a special tab there called the annotations. So in this example is the smart chart control uh, because if it's a smart control, we have that special tab that helps a lot when doing uh, development with this control. And finally, uh, bonus information that will be available in the SAP community. Okay, if you just scan this QR code at the same time uh, tomorrow, more or less uh, at the uh, end of the uh, event, uh, a little bit before the end of the event tomorrow, I will post on my SAP community uh, profile, a blog containing basically a report of what are the most used annotations. So basically I did a small 
uh, research on uh, S4 HANA system in more or less 20 apps. And I created some charts showing what are the most used annotations. I hope this uh, helped you. So just scan the QR code and tomorrow more or less at the same time, you can see that report available for you. All right. And Thank you, Fabio. You just made it easier to use annotations. Um, we have a few interesting questions. Um, let me start with the first one. Sure. And it's an interesting one. I have the same question as well. Are CAP, a cloud application Poirier model, and RAP, RESTful ABA Poirier model, annotations the same? So if you develop one, can I use the same file in the other one? Yes, but usually I don't. I don't see that um, personally. Uh, talking about SAP standard apps, you might have the same annotation being used over and over again. But it's uh, at least in my opinion, it's more uh, frequent to find, for example, different CDSs, uh, one for each app, and in the end, you're gonna use the same annotation, but in different files, or in the front end, or in the back end. Okay, so even though technically it's possible to have a single source of annotations, usually coming from the back end in this scenario, being used over and over again, I don't think that's that common, to be honest. Okay, that's clear. Thank you, Fabio. Another question How can you figure out corresponding CDS UI annotations for a front end annotation via annotation.xml? That's definitely a challenge because many things are have to be taken into consideration, like the version of UI5 you're using or the version of the uh, NetRiver stack. So personally, I see the benefit of checking the samples in the UI5 documentation. And if you, if you are able to do it, also checking uh, real world examples from apps provided by SAP. Because even though the documentation is getting better. Uh, a few scenarios, you need something that is very specific and uh, there's not too much examples in the Wi-5 documentation. If, even though they are very important, if you need something a little bit different, you might need to do some research. Uh, personally, I think that the, the most of the effort when creating Fury Elements applications is uh, searching for the right annotations. That's definitely a challenge. No, no question about it. Oh, okay, thank you, Fabio, again. Um, another question, and it's maybe a tricky one. Um, have you faced any limitations by using annotations? Not today, but <laughs> this is very common. Uh, that's very common. So uh, I, I was also talking about this uh, during the, the break we had. Uh, personally, I believe that's a good idea to understand more or less how the smart controls work before trying to use them in a real world app. So just create a, a side project so you can see the concept, see uh, the effort of doing something simple and the effort of doing something more complex because there are certain situations where if you start, by, start using a smart control, and then the requirements are very specific. You might, you might have a situation where you, you might need to just throw away the, the use of the smart controls to, to write your own control or to use a, um, a custom uh, generic uh, control for that. So for example, uh, I always mention the smart chart. The smart chart is a very uh, nice control because creating a charting uh, using the SAP V's namespace uh, might, might be uh, some, some effort. Okay, but at the same time, you, you have to understand the limitations of the controls. And this will depend on the version you are using, the samples provided by SAP. That's definitely another challenge. Okay. Okay, thank you, Fabio. I think the time is up. Um, so yeah, thanks again and see you in the next session.